So when this video goes up, it'll be like three days before Christmas. Yeah. Carl, what do you want for Christmas? Uh, a day off. A day off from this shit. <laughs> The Templars were a famous, almost mythical order of knights and badasses famed across the ancient world for their ability to split wigs with lightning fast sword strikes and shatter rib cages with armoured right hooks. Or at least they were until around the 14th century, when most of them were rounded up and killed because of their beards. Okay, uh, what? I should probably clarify a bit, shouldn't I? Because that yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense yeah, in that context. A little bit. The Templars weren't hunted down and killed just because they had beards. They were hunted down and killed because they were Templars who just so happened to have very specific kinds of beards. A great big bushy beard. Which I think clears everything up and means we're done for the day. Awesome, it's had to go home. No, no, Brad, no, get, get back. And Brad's looking at get me. Get back right? there. <laughs> he didn't know I was gonna do that and he got really worried then. He's like, oh, my camera's going out of focus. Um, we should probably talk about why the Templars have been hunted down and killed as well. Right. I guess people might not know that either. So let's get into that as well. So a quick history lesson now for people whose entire knowledge of who the Templars were is based on the Assassin's Creed games. Prior to the loss of the Holy Lands at the end of the Crusades, the Templars were amongst the most powerful groups on Earth. However, at the end of the Crusades, the Templars found themselves with little influence and powerful enemies. A bad combination at any point in history, let alone the 14th fucking century. The most notable of these enemies was the Iron King, King Philip IV, who as you can see from this picture was far less intimidating and awesome looking than his nickname suggested. It looks like an Easter Island head. Well, that's what you get when it's like 12 generations of inbreeding. You're going to accentuate your family's worst feature. Usually, when people have babies, what's the thing they say? I hope he gets your nose and my eyes. And if you're having a, like, sex with your sister, it's like, well, it's going to get our, your nose and my nose doubled up. And that's what happened with the King Philip, I feel. Because his genes are slowly degrading to the point that he's going to go insane at age 30 and order that they murder all of the Templars. So Brad, you probably aware there's a lot of like conspiracy theories about the Templars still running the world today because of all the wealth they managed to consolidate back then. And I don't think that's true. But what is true is that the Templars were unreasonably wealthy. They had so much money that they lent money to kings. Like if you wanted to fund a war, you'd have to go ask the Templars for money. You're probably thinking, that sounds an awful lot like something in Game of Thrones, like the Iron Bank, is it? Yeah. Who are so rich, they're basically, whoever they want to win a war will say, we'll give you the money to fund it. We both know how expensive war can be. And we both know gold wins wars. That's what the Templars were, and King Philip owed the Templars a lot of money. Philip had been borrowing money from the Templars to help finance his wars against the English, and by 1307, he was desperately short of funds. So what King Dipshit did is, Brad, he saw that after the loss of the Holy Lands, the Templars weren't all that popular. So he thought, maybe I can turn around public perception on this group so I don't have to pay back all that money I owe them. To sum up the Templars, they were like really into Jesus. Like they love them some Jesus. So he started a rumor that they were all blasphemers and super blasphemers, and that they also engaged in indecent kissing, which is like obviously, um, uh, a way of saying they were kind of gay, which back then was obviously a bad idea to be kind of gay during the Crusades. The charge of heresy was totally devastating because the temple was founded to defend the faith and heresy is betraying the faith. So this charge had the power to destroy the temple order. So yeah, that turned around public perception pretty sharpish. The problem was it was all bullshit. And all the people who admitted to doing this, like the Templars who admitted to like, yes, I spit on the cross, which is something King Philip told people that the Templars did. Yes, I renounced Jesus um, is because he tortured them. They said, I'll stop torturing you. Just admit you saw one of your Templar brothers spit on the cross. And they were like, never torture him a bit more. OK, I did see it. OK, now you're dead. Did you hear that, guys? He definitely admitted to it. The Templars are evil, so I don't have to pay him back the money. Because if I pay him back money, I'm funding an evil organisation. And it's part of King Philip's like, massive like harassment campaign of the Templars that is one of the reasons people think they're like super evil today <laughs> because they think oh yeah well there must have been a reason that there was this like huge conspiracy theory about them back then and it's because some dude didn't want to pay his fucking debts because I remember like the Templars and people saw them on the battlefield they just quit like, they were amongst the most feared like soldiers 
in the world at that point. When you saw that white tunic on the battlefield, some people would just surrender straight away. It's like, holy shit, the Templars are here. I give up. So do we actually know how much money the Templars had? A lot. Enough to finance wars, enough where kings of countries would come out and ask them for a handout. Individual Templars, however, didn't really have all that much because to become a Templar, you had to give away all your worldly possessions and donate them to the cause for your brothers. And I think this is represented by the fact the logo of the Templars was two knights riding on one horse to show, like, oh, we've only got like one horse between these two knights, when in reality, they consolidated the most wealth in the ancient world <laughs> to the point they just basically became a bank. And it was one of those things where he said, oh, if you are traveling across, like I think the Holy Lands, if you were a trader, what you'd do is you'd go to a Templar and you say, look, I want to go across here, but I don't want bandits to steal my bullshit. Will you take care of my stuff? And they say, yeah, here's a written order from a Templar knight. You go over there and give it to another Templar and he'll give you the equivalent amount of gold for the stuff you've deposited here. And that's how they worked. And they say also as well, while you're traveling across here, you can have a Templar guard with you. And obviously no one's gonna fuck with a Templar. If you're a bandit and you see a guy walking through with a Templar, I think one, he's got nothing because it's all back at the Templar base. And two, am I gonna fuck with a Templar? And that's how they managed to like consolidate so much wealth and also get the goodwill of the public. So if you're just like an average Joe, it's like, I just wanna sell some seeds. And the Templar's like, okay, we'll look after your seeds, give you a really fair price. We'll protect you as you walk across the desert. We'll take food and water with you and you get to the side and our Templar will give you the exact value of it in gold or equivalent grain that you can then go sell. So they basically give you an IOU? Basically, yeah. And you know, obviously like the Templars, they have such a reputation, like these guys are men of God. They're not going to cheat you like someone else would. And their reputation was so good that that basically allowed them to do that. Do you ever play the first Assassin's Creed game? I remember though, I got one by leaping off of horseback. I just saw a Templar as I was going past, like down the road of Jerusalem. And I went, hang on, turned around my horse and I came up and leapt off the horse and just assassinated him in front of someone. And then got back on the horse and went away. It's like, yeah, no one will ever believe what that guy saw. A guy wearing all white leapt off the horse and just assassinated this legendary Templar knight with his bare hands, because he can't see the hidden blade. So back to King Arthat. Yeah, back And to the King fact Arthat. that he's hunting down Templars. Yes, and getting them all killed. Why are the beards relevant? Well, because the beards were the only real recognizable aspect of the Templars. And they supposedly styled their facial fuzz in such an iconic way, you could recognize a Templar on sight. So even if he wasn't wearing like the iconic white tunic, which, um, if people don't know, once you got that, that was the only thing you were allowed to wear as a Templar. They wore that every single day. And if you weren't wearing it, you couldn't eat. Like, if you wanted to go eat inside the Templar like, place as a Templar and you weren't wearing your white tunic, you weren't allowed to talk and they wouldn't serve you food until you put it on. So once they took that off, it's like, well, holy shit, now he's just a dude. Oh, wait a minute. Don't the Templars style their beard in a really specific way? That dude's got a beard that looks like that. He's definitely a Templar. And obviously when you torture the person, under torture you'll admit to anything. So, oh, I'm a Templar, which only fueled that idea. So what the Templars started doing is shaving off their beards. It doesn't matter if you have the beard on the outside, as long as you got the beard on the inside. Which is what you would do. Oh my God, everyone with beards is getting killed. Shave off your fucking beard. But obviously some of them didn't, because obviously growing the beard in that way and wearing the tunic was obviously a vow they made to God. Yeah. So some of them didn't break that and they were captured, but a lot of them did just shave it off and just go into hiding, which started this weird cat and mouse game between like the French authorities and Templars, where they were hunting down men with beards and men with beards is like desperately shaving it off. <laughs> and I imagine at least one of them kicked down the door to someone's house as he's midway through shaving the beard. And like the, the guy sees it and it's like the scene from uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers where he goes, Aah! And points, and as he knows, it's like really quickly trying to shave off the beard. <laughs> and as soon as that last shave goes, he walks off and goes, Where did that Templar go? Yeah, he just walks in, it's like, Wait a minute, there was a Templar here, but he's gone now. He goes, Yeah, I think he went out the window. Thank you, ordinary citizen. I will leave you to do. If you see any Templars though, make sure you report them to the authorities so you can torture and kill them. Can do. It would be like that scene in Four Lions, wouldn't it? Where they don't want to shave the beard, but they also got to hide it so they don't get captured. So it's like the dude he walks into the shop like this. Right. So you went into a shop 
with your hands on your face like that. What, what, what's this? What, what's this? My, I'm hiding my beard. You're supposed to be a woman. So why has she got her hands on her face, Fess? Because she's got a beard. If you've not seen Four Lions, go watch it. That film is amazing. And, and set in Sheffield. It's set in Sheffield as well, yeah. So you can, I actually, the reason I order from Kebabish is because it was in... Um, uh, because I recognise it from Four Lions. And I went, oh, yeah. And if you look at it, it says on it, when you unjust eat, local legend. Hey. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that, bro? I like things like the Templars were so committed that after they shaved the beard and got away with it, he'd like go and just force them like a full beard would just grow instantly. I was like a guy and he, the French authorities kick his door down and they're looking, it's fine, there's no beard. And he goes under his bed and opens a box and there's a beard in there and he puts it on his face. He's like, sorry, daddy missed you, daddy missed you. We could probably make jokes about this all day, but we probably shouldn't because like some of those Templars got tortured super hard. And I mean really badly. And I think the story that sums up how bad some of these Templars got it is, there's a, a Templar who was tortured so hard and for so long, and I'm absolutely not making this up, the bones fell out of his feet. Merry Christmas, everybody! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brad, so I think I'm right in assuming, like me, you can't grow a proper beard, can you? Not like a huge bushy one. No, okay, so let's just pretend for a moment that you could, and then you had to hide it or you'd be arrested. How would you hide a giant fuzzy beard? I reckon, uh, you know those ventriloquist masks that you can make move by pressing? <laughs> I'd put one of them over so they didn't think I had one. What I'd do is I'd dye it white and wear a Santa hat and just tell people it was fake. That's playing the long fucking that is, game. That is genius That's right there. Way However, in July, I imagine that... I'll just say I'm really committed. And I want kids to believe I'm Santa. So if they see me in July and think I'm Santa, then I know it, when December rolls around, then I've got them. Also, you can't tug the beard. No, 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 I've, I've glued it on, I've glued it on. That's how committed I am to the role. Don't try tugging it too hard. Don't try tugging it too hard. All right, so yeah, people in the comments, if you had a giant fuzzy beard you had to hide, how would you hide it? Because I think my idea is the best one. To be honest, I think dyeing it white and just pretending it's glued on and it's a Santa beard and that you're just really fucking committed to being a Santa impersonator would be the best way to do it. But I'm assuming there are better ways I've not even thought of and I'd like to hear them. I can just constantly do a Brian Blessed impression because no one's, take, <laughs> yeah, no see, one's taking his beard away. No, no, oh, that'd be even better. You're not a Santa impersonator, you're a Brian Blessed. Because that doubles, one, it explains the beard, and two, you can, be a, you can just shout at everybody all the time. You get to walk around talking in all caps all the time. That's a way better idea. Yeah, I'm going to do that instead. That's my idea. Thanks, Brad. <laughs>